everything what I mean. What's going on, my birdies? It is Andrew of Beta AT Production and Publishing, bringing you guys a brand new YouTube video. In this YouTube video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a pop smoke or a UK drill type beat, uh, because those two styles are kind of, you know, I guess the same. I guess the, I think the producer for Pop Smoke is from the UK. Besides the point, so I already have the beat laid out and made. Everything's kind of structured and labeled so you guys can clearly uh, see what it is and kind of get an idea of how we're going to approach this beat. Uh, I'm going to first play the beat and then I'm going to play the sample and then we're going to start breaking it down and going through it. So that is the pop smoke type beat that I came up with or UK drill. Um, as you could probably tell in the outro, you actually heard the sample playing, not reverse. The sample is from the AT 2020 loop kit. It's a brand new loop kit we've released as 43 different uh, loops, um, which also includes each individual stem of a loop. So this is all just one loop because these are the individual elements from that loop, which you get as well as the key and BPM. 
Uh, I'm going to show you guys how I manipulated the sample. And then I'm also show you right now what the sample originally was. So here's what the sample sounds like originally before doing any tweaks to it. And turned it into this. So as you can tell that the original sample was 130. 130 would have potentially worked, but when I was uh, working with this sample, I actually wasn't intending to make a uh, pop smoke type beat, honestly, but that's what it came out to be after I made, put this sample down. So essentially I dropped each individual stem in the project. So when you drop it in here, I set the time because I have my tempo at 40, 145 already. I went to auto detect and then type in the BPM. You're typing in the BPM of the sample. So the sample was 130. So even though my project is 145, I'm setting it to 130 and I'm doing this because what's gonna happen is it's gonna restretch the sample and it's gonna be in the perfect four eight bar loop that it uh, should be in instead of like it being out of time obviously because it's a 130 bpm sample and a 145 bpm project so after i did that um i changed the pitch one octave down and then made the mode to resampling and the mode resampling changes how it affects the pitch and speed of the sample when you change the bpm of it like it, let's just like turn all three actually no we could just go over here. You can hear how fast uh, that sample is and uh, the change in key th than what it originally was. Originally it was F minor, now it's G minor. Um, after I did a key detection, we went from F to G minor and then 130 to 145 BPM. All right, so you're probably sick of the beep, uh, sample explanation at this point. So, and all I did was uh, reverse all of them until we got to that outro. Um, so moving on, I have this uh, little transition drums section, which is honestly just a breakaway from the main drums. So honestly, I'm gonna go over the main drums and then I'm gonna come back to the transition drums because it would make a little bit more sense. Comes in on the bell, which is just a generic, like the Chicago drill bell. Got the box uh, chant and then I got this, uh, the little um, ah from Zeto the Zaytoven ah. So, bell, those two little vocal effects, then the drums. So the drums are the element that really define it as like the UK drill pop smoke because of like the hi-hat positioning and the 808 slides. Uh, those are the main contributing factors to this type of sound. So if I play the drums. So how I did it was I, I went 808s, hi-hat, snare, snare. I went from top to bottom. So everything you see from the top down to the bottom is how I actually laid everything out. So breaking it down. Turn off all these individual elements. So, 808. They're kind of simple. I work with the, I just try to get the bass, the main one down, which would be like the D that just goes all the way through. And then for here, I had the A that comes up. 
then a slide and which all you do for a slide is either click this you make a slide or you double click one of your notes and then you go here and then accept but slides are easy you just gotta know how to do them and there has to be a note under them because it goes from the note to the slide up to the key where the slide is at and as you can see everything is within key of the actual sample so This changes up right here, but we'll get to that in a second after we break through all these drums. So then the hi-hats. So here's the hi-hat. It's like this offbeat. I originally had something that was more complicated and sounded awful, so I kept it pretty simple. And then I figured I'd just add more drums to fill it up. So it starts on like the third, and then goes one, two, start on the third, but the third to last to the third on the first. That's how you get that offbeat. Right? And then the velocity rolls up on these. It's just like a little change up. So it keeps it simple, a uh, simple snare all the way through, then a snare with the little bounce. I just want to change uh, this snare around a little bit, but. There's a couple of uh, snare rules. I'm trying to keep it pretty because it's easy to overdo it. And the downside of making these beats is someone would be like, I don't know how to get on this because there's too much coming at me. So here we got this uh, open hat. More high hat rolls. Then the kicks, which are roughly based around the 808s. All these drums are from the AT Soundkit 5. So if you guys want these drums and like them, check out the AT Soundkit 5. Um, and like I said, the melody sample is from the AT 2020 Loop Kit. I'll put the links to everything down in the description down below. So if you guys want them, you can get them there. I'll even include like a little bonus uh, promo code for you. But I'll continue. <laughs> Just went through the drum pattern. You have those almost like offbeat hi hats or on the thirds. Um, got the 808 slides and uh, a lot more of the drills. So when we get into this one right here, it changes up just on like the, I guess you would say for the sixth, no, the, yeah, the fourth bar of the uh, um, chorus because it's an eight bar chorus. So what happens is it goes into this 808, which it's like the same pattern, but in here I have a slide. It starts on the G, then it comes down to D, then down to G5, then up to G6 again. But it kind of, it all like fits within the first 808 note. So you don't really hear all of them because the 808 dies out. So as it dies out, the slides kind of fade out. <laughs> And you know the 808 dies out because there's this. It's a, the sound does not sustain uh, infinitely. It just dies down. Um, and I use the ADSR, uh, no attack, no delay, no DK, like instant sustain and the hold max for my envelope of the sound. That's just so when, when I click the keyboard on the 808, it stops after after each click um what else we got here 
Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, and then I trim off the drums right there into the verse. Now, to get this transition drum, all it is is like the last segment of uh, one of the drum patterns. And uh, 808, hi-hat, snare, uh, snare roll, hi-hat roll, kick. It just has like that groove because it comes out of nowhere, but it like leads you in. And so how you guys could do it is just literally get your drum track, put it right here, cut it, make unique. So we just made it unique and then just, this is pretty much how I did it. Uh, no. I mean, that's pretty much it. I think that's, yeah, that's exactly it. That's so it's not really that hard. All right. Continuing on into the verse, um, we get rid of the flute. So we have a reverse guitar and pad, and then we have this drum pattern, which we got rid of the kicks and we don't have the vocal effects. We come in with that bell just on the hit of the verse, but it doesn't come in at any other point. And then we cut out the 808 right here, just as like a cool little breakaway to keep the beat interesting. <laughs> do the 808 cut I think we we also we still don't have the kicks I think we bring in the kicks so we bring in the kicks you would say I guess four bars in and I got rid of one I think this yeah I got rid of that one right there the one uh, drum or was it like right there and then the slides so it's a simpler 808 pattern so these are like just small things that you do is like cutting away certain elements as the beat progresses but nothing too drastic because if you add anything too new or change it up too much it may be hard for the artist to keep flowing or keep their uh, energy up or may, might be hard for a songwriter to write to it or whatever um, and then we have the same drum pattern right there but then we come into this bridge where we just have the instrumental kind of just like the intro pretty much so literally the intro chorus doesn't change at all so in verse two we copy all of this it's copied the same the only change that we get is when we get to that bridge in this bridge, I copied the drum pattern over here, which had the kicks and less, it had less uh, 808 slides. So I put this one right here and then I put a uh, master EQ right here. And I slowly bring it out. So essentially what that is, is just a low bandpass filter bandpass because it's not a complete low, uh, low pass. It's more of it. We cut off some of the low end. So it would be a, essentially a bandpass and it fades out as it gets closer to the chorus while it also shifts the frequency band better. And then I have the drums and then I cut them off halfway and I bring in the transition again. It's just an interesting little change up to make it, you know, something better than just using the intro looped multiple times um, throughout the beat. So then we go through the chorus again. And then after the chorus, we have the outro, which all I did was make these unique from these and then uh, turned off the reverse. And I brought over and 
brought I brought these drums in that didn't actually have any 808s. This has like an interesting side. I kind of wanted to set it up as if you were almost getting two beats out of one beat, even though it's just like reverb and normal. But now um, I'm gonna go through I'm gonna go through the mix real quick and then uh, do a little touch on the master. Um, so mix, I mean, I don't really need to do a whole lot to these samples other than uh, EQ one of them and. Uh, make one slightly mono and then stereoize just one of them. You can see that down at the bottom by that. Uh, so you can see the leveling. Then the 808 was pretty loud after the little boost around 90 with the EQ. Brought in the Camel Crusher, which is my, personally my favorite 808 distorter. And then I did even more EQing after that. So it like hit, hit. That was kind of like my goal. I wanted it to be very... You can hear it really clear. Um, the kick, I added like a little bit of distortion to it. Like it's just the hairest of hair. I mean, you can hear it, but kick, just some rough. Use the sound goodizer on my kick. In my master, I use it, but I'm like barely, if even. Um, I make both my kick and 808 mono. It's, I recommend doing it, but everyone to each his own, I guess. Um, hi hat, nothing crate, just nothing really. Uh, snare, did a little bit, nothing really. I mean, EQ'd a little bit, same thing, nothing. There's like some leveling, but like most of my, most of it was pretty well balanced and I make all the drum samples. So for the most part, I make uh, a well majority of them. So they're usually set to how I like it. The crash symbol, as you can see, I'm really, the bell, I just pulled it down a bit. The ah, uh, I did do like a little bit of EQing. And then I did uh, some reverb, Vox, nothing, producer tag, standard. <clears throat> so. is when I really start squeezing stuff down and making it as loud as possible um, when you guys hear it in the the beat in the beginning of the video that's going to be using the bounced down uh, final audio so you guys are actually hearing like the final mix down I guess you would say as I've been working through this tutorial I had to turn off the master bus because it was using up uh, too much CPU um, but as you could probably hear, it sounds fine without it, but I just wanted to pump it up a little bit more. And then I wanted to do a little bit of imaging to spread it out, max maximize the whole depth of the track, but not going overboard. Um, I did a decent amount of the stereo eyes, but I try to keep my, uh, low region still mono as much as possible. I don't want to lose that. <laughs> maximizer i'm really not doing a whole lot whole lot I'm just crunching it a bit um the analog mode is great for keeping like low mid uh frequencies and warm myth uh warmth to your track warm myth uh warmth to your track the analog uh, mode i mean that's pretty much the whole the whole rap of the beat i don't think there's really anything else uh, 
worth mentioning this is just a master fader just to fit out the uh this uh the master fader but that's the whole beat if you guys want the sample pack that the loop pack and the drum pack that i used making this beat i'll put the links to them down in the description down below um yeah uh i try my best to give you guys the most information a lot of uh tools and knowledge i'm kind of aware that i'm probably not the most uh entertaining or uh add uh beat maker youtube teacher but uh i try to provide quality content that can uh teach you guys everything you need to know to really get forward and uh, making beats and uh get your mind right and ready to see like the structure to understand each element why i'm doing certain things how you guys can and what tools i'm using so yeah this is andrew of beat at and i'll see you guys later be sure to thumbs up like share and subscribe if you liked it appreciate it